So yeah, this is Scott Campbell. Um, Scott, I've known him for actually I don't know, a couple of years. Um, probably been working with him most of that time. Um, I think he's amazing <laughs> um, because he. Uh, uh, one of the one of the things I love about Scott is he really talks about value a lot. So it's not just about self it's about okay, how much value can you give, and then you'll get the return. And I, that's personally what I love about it. Not everyone does, but that's what I love um, about working with him. It's very very value based, and he totally gets the feminine flow side of things. He gets the intuition. He understands. He may not do. You know, he's a man, but he gets it. So that's why I like him. <laughs> I think that's a compliment, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah so um, <laughs> he's going to share stuff and you have no idea what because um, I just know it'd be amazing. So we, uh, Scott's going to cover a little bit of content that he's prepared for us um, and then we're going to go on to Q&A. And I've said before we use most of the time for the Q&A because it's probably based on what we've already come out and what he's going to share with us. So, over to you. Thank you. I promise you it won't be as much as we spot last one. So. <laughs> um, I'll just come I'm not going to do it about me anyway. If you want to know about me, I'm a person so you can talk to me afterwards, or you can talk to other people that know me really well, like Jill and Ted, but they'll tell us. Hope you're good thinking about me. Um, yeah, so we're going to just really cut past a bit of content. We're quite conscious. Obviously, you've got a lot of questions. Um, and to go really kind of give you some real value is spend the majority of time on them questions, if you want, okay? If there's anything in the content that kind of you really want to go a bit deeper on, then by all means you can email me afterwards, you can engage with me on social media, you can do all those things and I'll give you as much time as you need to answer them in a bit more detail. But obviously in the questions as well, and if you don't get your question answered fully, then by all means um, don't feel bad about tapping me up afterwards and saying, can I go into this in a bit more detail. Um, I mean, uh, Tab will, will probably agree that I, I give a lot of content people I don't believe in selling to people I believe in I'll give you as much content at your go that's great and if you go and build a million pound business on the back of it do you know what that's fine I'm happy with that but what a lot of people do is they come back and go Scott actually I get it but can you really help me and then that's the way I do business so uh, which is probably why 75% of my, my clients are women because <laughs> <So, laughs> so, um, it's a bit different than most other men you know out there but just to break well, I'm not a social media guru because um, I have a really bad term guru um, and all I am is a marketing strategist expert. It just so happens that social media platform is just, for marketing, it's just an absolute dream. Um, it's, you know, and it's never been better than what it is now. It's very much changing. We're in a very transitional stage of how social media is being used, which is why I go through some of the content I'm gonna go through. Um, so for me, it's not about being a social media guru, it's about actually just using the best marketing tools that are out there at the moment um, to get clients and, and to give Great content back to your clients. So, um, and I don't know any of the technical stuff. So don't go technical on me. Right, so. <laughs> That's why I get. <coughs> yeah, I'll give you. It took me half an hour to change my password for a client on Instagram the other day. So it's uh, like I've had the technical stuff. So anyway, it's obviously quite a short time to want to go to Q and A. So I really want to just cover the two real base things. And this is stuff that actually I've not released before. So you're kind of the first to get this content from me, which is cool. Um, so really, it's about what content where and how best to engage. I think they're probably the two questions that most people struggle with, particularly on social media. So, where, on which platform, and um, I've probably only, did probably another 10 different types of platform out there that I haven't mentioned, but I've sort of covered the top six in my book. So really, obviously the main platforms, we've got Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. But really what you want to decide, before you decide what platform, you have to decide what kind of content you're going to be giving out. And everyone's different. So have we got any photographers in the room? No? No photographers? I call them. Normally one in the room. <laughs> um, but obviously it'd be very image related, the sort of content that you want to give out to showcase your images. The other sort of type of content you get out is short form text. So if you're using short form text, then obviously Twitter and LinkedIn are very good for that. Um, if it's long form text, so if you do a lot of articles, uh, daily articles, then kind of LinkedIn articles, everyone uses LinkedIn Pulse at the moment, it's a great medium for it to use. Um, and then here we're going to videos. So if you're doing short videos, and I put sub here sub 30 seconds, and a lot of people don't get this, but they go, well, what's the point of doing a video that's sub 30 seconds? But you only have to look at how popular Vine was. It's gone off a little bit since Facebook started introducing video and Twitter video and Instagram. But Vine has been so popular the last two years 
six second videos. Um, and it's funny, people get attracted to it because it's only six second video, but in the end they actually end up watching three hours of video in one go, so that's kind of, uh, but don't underestimate video, but there's a real kind of rule that <coughs> if it's very short video, then things like Instagram is a real good use of that, and Facebook as well. If it's two minutes to 20 minutes, then FaceTube, uh, Facebook and YouTube, and if it's over 20 minutes your video, you really want to do it not using any social media and actually drive then people to your website. So if you've got a video that's around an hour long or something like that, or even 30, 45 minutes, 45 minutes to sit down and watch a video is a long time for someone to intake that content without getting distracted by the kids, by the husbands or the wives, you know, or the telly or any all my phone as it is, you know, beeping off. So if it's anything over 20 minutes, then you want to do a little sub video before that's a couple of minutes and actually then drive their traffic to a website or a landing page or even a YouTube video which has got the longer content on it. Um, so once you've decided what sort of content you're going to be giving out to best highlight your business, that's when you decide what platform to use. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's, out of all them, has is, is anyone kind of got any sort of favourites they use at the moment? Do they? Facebook. Facebook. Anyone, anyone use LinkedIn a lot here? Yeah. I need to, but I don't know how to, and that's one of my... Right, cool. Right. <coughs> okay. no, no one said Instagram, did they? Or Pinterest? I Instagram. Instagram. I use Pinterest to uh, communicate with clients, okay. so we'll set up a board between us and both have to I tell you what, the reason why I say Instagram and Pinterest is if you look at Instagram, as a general statistic, probably 70% of the audience are sub 30. What that statistic doesn't tell you is in the last six months, the biggest growth demographic is women between age 30 and 55 on Instagram. Mm. Okay. And Pinterest is completely out of scale, where it is the biggest demographic is women aged between 25 and 45. And actually, they find that the, the biggest demographic is women above 45 that are starting to use it as well. Um, and the best, best way to kind of Pinterest for it is it's kind of almost like a search engine for images. Really powerful tool in itself. So, um, so that goes, work on what content you want to give out first, then decide what platform rather than what everyone does it their way around. Okay? So, the other thing is about how they to best engage. Now, the biggest key is you've got to have a strategy for each platform that you're using. Um, now, if you're struggling to use social media all the time and you get like, oh, what are they, what I'm doing, then don't try and do all of them. Just pick two and just do them well. I mean, I do four and I do them well um, for my own business. We use a lot more for my clients, but the four I use my business and it's kind of LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. But just pick a couple and just do them well and don't worry about it. If everyone says, oh, you've got to use it, you know, just don't worry about it. It's just you pick the two that best suit what platform your content's best for, and then just stick to them two. And have a strategy about where do you want the people to go from that you engage with on your social media. Yeah. Is it a landing page? Is it to, to go to your book? Is it to buy products? What is, is it just to build a list? Can you just expand on landing page? You know mm. Sorry. <laughs> so you've got a website. A landing page is just specifically about one product, and it's got not, not your website, so you, you'll go to a page, and all it have is like a video or a bit of text, and then an email, and your name and email address. So someone will go to it, you'll have a bit of great content on there, and you'll say, well, and if you want more great content, then if you put in your name and email address, you can receive that content. Then obviously you've got their name and email address, so you're building a list, and you can market to them and email market to them in the future. And there's loads of things you can do with that list, but the, uh, it's about knowing that you've got a tribe of people that actually want to receive your email on the back of your content. Is that, is that answer? Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay. So have a strategy of where you really want them to send them. <coughs> Whatever it is, where do you want them to go? And that can be different for each platform, by the way. So my strategy around what I do for Facebook is completely different than what I do for Twitter, and completely different than what I do for LinkedIn, and completely different than what I do for Instagram. They've all got their own little niches. and. And when you're engaging on the platform, you've got to remember you are going to get a certain percentage of people that follow you from platform to platform. So some of my Twitter followers I connect with on Facebook and also Instagram and so forth. 
but as much as possible, actually keep them separate and just have a demographic across all of them. Let your content kind of decide who actually engages with you rather than telling people in Facebook, come and follow me on Instagram, you know. I always say, I release every so often, you'll see me on Facebook, I release something every so often not about Instagram and say, and if you want to follow me, here's my, you know, here's my handle. But I don't say to people, follow me on Instagram, please, now, because I need more followers. You know, I actually let the content decide who follows me. And, that, and then there's a different strategy for each platform. This is where we're really transitioning at the moment and going over. And if you want to really win at social media, is care about who's following you and who's liking your stuff. Um, I'm quite proud that every day, that when I go through my social media feed, if someone's followed me, liked me, commented on one of my posts, anything like that, on any of the four that I do, is I'll go and look at their profile. Particularly someone new that's followed me that I don't know, I'll go and look at their profile <coughs> so that I know about them. And one thing that's really cool about that is I know who's following me. And when you get to know who's following you, you know what sort of content to give out to them. So my Instagram account over the last sort of kind of few months has very much changed from pure marketing tips to actually more motivational and inspirational stuff because of the type of people that follow me. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really get to know who your followers are. And again, with like Twitter, it's no point having 10,000 followers on Twitter if they all live in Malaysia and you don't sell any online products. <laughs> you know, um, it's just no point, you know. Whereas I know with my Twitter account that 79% of my Twitter followers live in the UK and 78% of them, their main, their main interest is business. So that's a real targeted audience for me on my Twitter one. So and the only way you're gonna know that is if you care about your followers and actually go and see what they're doing and what who they are. Because I wouldn't just go and go, oh, so there's my card, thank you, read all about me, see you later. I would go, right, tell me about your business, tell me about you, wouldn't I? It's the same as you should do on social media with your followers, exactly the same. Go all in. When you decide <coughs> on a platform that you're gonna use, go all in, and what I mean by that is, is do not automate it. I mean, I saw a question about automating in there somewhere actually pretty, but don't automate it and do not buy followers or likes. It just, if you automate your, your stuff, the chances are if you automate, you're gonna go, well, I'm doing social media, so I'm never gonna go on it again, because I'm doing Twitter. And I go, really, how are you doing it? Oh yeah, I just use uh, you know, the automation software, who's free, I do it, all the That's not news in social media, that's just broadcasting your message. That's just me again, coming around, giving you all a business card, and then walking out of the room, without talking to any of you. And you'd probably get that business card and probably <laughs> chuck it in the bin or something, wouldn't you? Right. So, go all in, and actually use the platform. So if it's, if it's Instagram and you haven't used Instagram before, then, then use it on a daily basis. Look at what other people are doing, look at what your competitors are doing, look at other accounts that you look at and you think, oh that's really, you know, that I'm actually drawn to that account. It might be something completely different, it might be, you know, all about cats or dogs or shoes or something like that, you know, but actually look at it and say, what is it you like about it? Because whatever it is you like about it, you'll get to understand then why other people are engaging with people on that platform. And one of the biggest wins that I get out of social media is I understand what the end consumer wants to consume from my clients. So it's, you know, and I know what they want to see. I know with my Instagram followers, they want to see high quality images with a very short kind of catchy sort of kind of motivational, inspirational little quote or, or tag, yeah? It's, I know with my Twitter followers, they want the latest business news updates. The same as the ones in LinkedIn, you know, when I go in LinkedIn and I go, um, cover my my opinion of a story that's in the news from a marketing point of view, that gets a lot of wins. So like I did one recently on the Herber and the Black Cab, but did it from a marketing point of view. I got loads of shares and loads of likes and loads of comments, but it's because it really kind of, I've, I've looked at, i played with the, the LinkedIn polls thing with the articles and I see what people are interacting with and I see what people are commenting on. So I know what's <coughs> landing. So go all in, just use the platform as if you're a consumer as well and you'll learn so much more from that than you will just thinking, oh, I can use that to make a quick buck, or I can use that just to get loads of followers and just do it. Okay? So, that is all we're gonna do on the content. <laughs> and so lots of that will be going to like a whole hour thing, but hopefully it gives you something about, just summarize it, but before you choose the platform you want to go into, then actually decide what content you're gonna be giving out first of all. Okay? Um, how many of you are actually business owners in the room? Just show of hands. Is that everyone? Well, okay, cool. Um, two on. Two on. Who's the two that knocks? No. No. <laughs> no. 
So, oh, sorry. that's all right, I've got something back there, so it's all right, I'll go back to that one in a minute. Um, I'm more conscious, just in case I need a pen on me. So can we just do something really quickly, I'm conscious obviously it doesn't take too much time off, literally three seconds, if we just go around the room, and sorry for the people that are not businesses, but, um, but what business industry are you in, just one word, not a whole, oh, I do this and I do that, and blah, 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 wear 16 hats, and just one business industry. Yeah. And what's the, the number one sort of social media platform you're using at the moment? Okay? Mine is Twitter. Twitter? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, uh, so we're using Facebook. Um, it's not necessarily all by the seats, it's actually to contact yeah. parents so parents get to see actually what their kids are doing. Okay, cool. It's an open page. Well, That's fine, yeah. Marketing is a female entrepreneur on Facebook. Okay. Sometimes LinkedIn, but Facebook's more than one. Did you say marketing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm a personal assistant and I use uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter for myself and yeah. my clients. Okay, cool. Um, I'm a cake designer and decorator and also a blogger about mental health awareness. Okay. And I use Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Cool. What's your favourite of all of them? If you could only go, if I said you only use one from now on, what would it be? Facebook. Okay. I might change that to Pinterest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a rental property portfolio. Okay. I don't know how it would apply. Okay, and probably my separate conversation would go too deep, but Instagram would be absolutely awesome for that. Okay. Good, very visual. Very visual. Mm -hmm. Jill. <laughs> um, business coach, um, I use um, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, just getting to learn about Instagram. My 12 year old goddaughter taught me the other day. Um, <laughs> How do young people use them? I liked one of your photos that day. Only because I was in it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the Twitter's my favourite. That's my go to. Because like, I've met an awful lot of people yeah. on Twitter. That's the worst one. Okay. Do you use, um, sorry, do you use LinkedIn Pulse with all the no, no, articles? That's new to me. Um, as a business coach, that's probably something you need to look at. Um, but regular articles would be a big win on it. Ellie? Um, entertainment, yeah. and I use um, the main four, three. Um, but if you if you were to say to me that I could only use one, yeah. for business it would have to be Facebook. Okay. But for enjoyment, Instagram. Okay, cool. Yeah, I agree with that. That's good. Uh, Family and health, and Facebook. Okay. So feminine health, did you say? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm a kinesiologist, and yeah. I'm just about to launch a Facebook page. I'm in the process of putting it into, putting it together. So I'm, at the moment, I'm not using any okay. social media. Okay. Facebook would be a good one. You've got a, a good sort of personal account, have you, with a good sort of support network, have you? Yeah. Yeah. Corporate. Right. Cool. Uh, and I'm on, I use LinkedIn, and I have a Twitter account, but I never know what to write, so I don't use it. I should use it. Okay, we might go into that review before we go back to Twitter. Graphic design and LinkedIn and Twitter. And I use Facebook and Instagram. Okay, cool. Yeah. So for business, LinkedIn and yes. Twitter. Yes. Okay. Again, sort of kind of, sorry, Nicole, the LinkedIn, um, Pinterest, and from a business point of view, we, you know, I need to. I've got a little vintage shop which I've been yeah. using Pinterest for, but I've not been using it for my graphic design yet. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, business coaching, personal development, Facebook, <laughs> all the way. I think we might be changing that really, really soon. But, um... <laughs> so you say it like that, it's going to come out like that. You just told us this. <laughs> you can tell she's resisting the change, can't you? <laughs> yeah. uh, credit control. Um, and I have uh, business pages on both Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, but I've been using mainly a business page on Facebook um, because I don't have LinkedIn enough yeah. to make it, you know, um, to make it work. Okay, cool. Again, I'll link LinkedIn articles and might answer some questions in a minute about that. Kinesiologist so. life enhancer, uh, Facebook. <coughs> okay. Although I have a council of the others. Yeah, that'd be all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, cool. That gives me just a fair idea of what you're sort of interested in. So the, um, 
We're going to... Uh, are some of them questions, Tamfer, that are on your email? On here, do you know what? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember what I sent you. We'll answer them quickly, just to... A lot easier than reading your writing as well. Uh, <laughs> how rude. It's <laughs> true, though. So, is, is Elise Fox, is she part of did you have you got loads of questions that you come over? Um it's opened up a can I, of I think and when I um, was sort of speaking earlier, I think a lot of my questions are sort of selfishly very my own issues as it were, rather than things that okay. it's gonna be the same for everybody though. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use it personally, you're not gonna be able to use it with your business head on. Nikki Warns, is it? That's me. Nikki, so <laughs> also be about what the most powerful ones in. Again, did that answer a question about what, depending on what content you're going yeah. to be giving out? Well, and it's all spoke uh, just before you come as well, but that there's so many out there, but yeah. well, you think you should be at all of them to get maximum <coughs> coverage, actually, if you focus more on the ones that will work or that you enjoy yeah. using. Yeah, and it is dependent on what content you've got to give out as well. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Hayley, is it worth spending money with Facebook? Mm, you've already asked that. <laughs> like, because there's so many, thing, so many times, especially for pages, if everyone's got a page yeah. for there. Um, business, it will say, oh, this could reach so many if you sponsor your page or you pay yeah. for it. And I just wondered, is it worth it? Yeah, you're bit, but long term, energy, even short term, long term, um, organic is always going to be yeah. the best because you know that people are interested in your content. Mm -hmm. And as long as you get them on your content rather than actually just paying for them to be there, then trying to deliver them content is, is very difficult. So it's always going to be. I always, I always believe in that, but then every time like you see a competitor and it says sponsor, it pops up on your fucking page. Yeah. Like, well, no way! To be fair, I mean, you can get one. We do a lot. Of, with my clients, we use a lot of dark posts to do that, and they come up to sponsor one. But it's really kind of around where the whole strategy is. In terms of just getting people to pay for someone to like your page, it's not really a good. Move. No, it's just making it more. Um, your visit, your visibility higher. That's all it is. But then, if but I no, post it, does, it does the opposite. Actually. Oh really? Yeah, without going into too technical, it does obviously because if you buy ten thousand likes for your Facebook page, right, and then you put a post on, and then ten thousand, by the way, would be Malaysian, Egypt, all people around there. What happens is, is Facebook, when you do a post, whatever it is, Facebook will send it to a very small percentage first of all. Okay, if then people don't, if then people don't engage with it at all, which they won't because they've been paid. So yeah, not interested. pence mm -hmm. of a zero just to like your page then Facebook won't get it out to anyone else. That's why the reach is so low. Right. Whereas on their hand, if, say, they send it out to 10 people and three people either look at it and they can tell they just stop on the screen and look at it, I don't know how, but they do. But if they just look at it or they like or comment on it, then it'll, Facebook will go, oh, well, it's obviously people interested. They send it to another 10 people, see how they react to it. If they react well, they then go, well, let's send it out to everyone because obviously people are engaging with it. So actually, the opposite has a negative effect on your visibility. Perfect. Oh, thank you. Off the back of that, I have a question that my clients usually ask me is um, boosted posts for Facebook adverts, yeah. should they be engaged no. in them? No, that's where you need to go into the, the dark post in yeah. the background and really be really specific. <coughs> and probably around content as well, rather than just a, a buy me sort of ad. Um, Joanna, Google Plus, basic overview, please. Oh, is that you, sir? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to be really harsh here, actually. Who, who, who uses Google Plus? Or? I didn't know it is. Well, okay, don't bother. It is not worth your thing. They try to kind of, their version to compete with Facebook and whatever, it hasn't taken off. There's a lot of statistics to show that um, they did in America recently with some marketing people that they got people to webinar through all the different platforms and did a separate webinar. The Google Plus one was the lowest response and the lowest percentage of action takers completely. It's just kind of Google and Google, so they don't know what they're doing with it. It was it was a group of marketers in America that did it, and uh, but they did a series of webinars, the same webinar, but just targeted people through Facebook through at different times, and and Google Plus was by far the worst. Um, and Google say so themselves don't know actually what they're doing with it, so. So on Facebook, you know the algorithms, like yeah. sometimes when you send something out, only 5% of your people who like your page see yeah. it, like you're for. So instead of doing a paid ad, would you then just keep posting regular content, which add value and engage in and keep going? Yeah. But what do you mean about dark posts? Well, dark posts, I want to go too deep, but you can do, well, you've really got the boost post on your things, 
Okay, that just literally boosts the post to your friends and it's very ungeneric if you like, just gets it out there. So then you go, oh, I've recent post, all of a sudden 200 people seen it, very great. But then if I ask a question, well, what has it actually brought you pound notes? You're going to go, no. Because it's just great, I've got some great, you know, I've got some great people looking at it. Whereas with the power editor, which you go into, the power editor, the dark post, you can be ultra targeted. So you can target people's age, you can target people on their likes, people that like, if you're selling wine, and people that like Marks and Spencer's, you know, food and stuff like that. Turning your likes into cash. So, yeah. so I, I have done yeah. Facebook ads that have brought me <coughs> clients, yeah. but, but you're just saying be specific. Yeah, yeah, be old specific. And that's the little dot that you can put. Yeah, post. but if you just do the post, post, and that's it, until your friends and things and all that. And unless it's something, unless you've just really done, I've done something where it's just really done it for but just to get it out, you know, to show people with it, but knowing it's not going to get any. Pound notes, but just to get that actually first sort of awareness before we start another campaign. So it depends, yeah, but initially on the Facebook, you're going to be wasting your money. <coughs> I always do it like three times. So I do it once, then I look at who likes it, then I yeah. retarget them with a video or something, and then do it that way. So it's more of a strategy. You can do, but you're probably worth better putting the time. The people that like it, actually you reach out to them. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, but not retargeting, actually reach out to them. So send them a, a direct message with some content that's going to help them, okay. not by me because I've just emailed you, yeah. but thanks for liking, hope you found my page or whatever you sent it to are valuable, how can, I, how can I help you get to where you want to get now, to? Suddenly you can message people on Facebook, can't you, through your business page, which you could never yeah. do before. Oh, right. Yeah, you can suddenly do that now, which is really helpful. Yeah, as long as you don't overstand yourselves, remember, how would you feel if someone was doing it to you? Um, I don't like and then, then, then <laughs> <laughs> we, we get annoyed now when people call us, don't we? I mean, so let alone you know when we get Facebook yeah. message by someone we don't like, yo, know, don't know, you know. So, so really, you've got to remember you kind of put yourself in their shoes, but you're there for them. What do they want from it? You know, what would be again? What would be right for them? You know, how would you feel? And if you if you if you think you feel a little bit, mm, then then you don't do it, obviously. So, um, Charlotte. She's not here. She's not here. Okay. She had one about Facebook ads. So I think we've covered that anyway. On that. All right. Let's Can get I quickly ask. Go um, on. Obviously, hashtag works great on Twitter and on Instagram. Yeah. Does it work on Facebook? No, not really. Yeah, you can Facebook. search for hashtags, but it hasn't got the. The problem is with it is hashtag was very much born as a Twitter world. Mm. Instagram have embraced it completely, mm. which is great. Um, Pinterest a little bit as well. Um, LinkedIn and Facebook have gone, well, that's not our platform. Yeah. So it looks weird. It looks horrible. Yes. It's the yeah. same as, you know, you don't connect any of your accounts. So do not connect your Twitter account with your Facebook account. Okay. Because if you put a post, if you do that and you put a picture on its own on Facebook, on Twitter, it's, it's, just, a, it's just a Facebook link. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of upsetting the people that are upset. It just doesn't sit right. And all the platforms have got their own uniqueness. And the people on Twitter and LinkedIn that are really in-depth with it and don't go anything else go, oh, well, or Facebook, they go with Facebook, but that's a hashtag, that's not, that's Twitter, you know, so they, they kind of think, people suss now that you're automating stuff and like that, whatever, and so they don't engage with it, and if anything, they get annoyed with it. So. And a lot of them, if they're over 140 on Facebook characters, and you put it on Twitter, then it didn't finish it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And the same with LinkedIn. Just to tell me about a couple of questions about and a lot you said about Facebook. So if you really want to improve the reach of a Facebook post on your business page, which is difficult because so business pages, by the way, are gonna <coughs> they're almost just there for a branding exercise. I actually use my Facebook business page very little now because I set up the group, the marketing help for small business owners. I'm looking at you, I don't know why, but the um, the uh, and I'm actually in that group more often now because I'm interacting on that on a daily basis. I've just posted a a picture of you, you girls at the back there actually on the end. but the I'm engaged with that because people come to that group for help because it's marketing help for when you go to someone's page you kind of go in for them is that it? so rather than so trying to get your reach out on your page is actually quite difficult because you're asking people to come to your page with them knowing fine well it's all about you nothing about them and that's where marketing very much changes social media over there and we're in that transitional period of that so Facebook pages can become very fun. I like the fact that, that Facebook do what they do. They don't just send a post out because I think my feed's been a lot better since I started doing that. So I like that. 
But if you want to really get the reach out of your thing, what I do is, is so what you've got on Facebook, which is great, you see, there's lots of Facebook groups. And to find the Facebook groups where your idle clients sit in, if you do a post on your Facebook page, okay, on your business page, that's of giving content and you're giving some support and help or whatever like that, you put it on your Facebook page, people get a notification saying, Tabitha's, you know, added to her business page, okay, you leave that, the late, do that in the, in, the, in the early part of the morning. Later on, and if anyone follows me, you'll know that I do it later on about nine o'clock because I do it when the kids have just finally got them to bed and, and Nicole's having a shower and everything and then I get a, what I call my hour later on that I do with catch up on my stuff. Then I'll, I'll actually share that. So I'll go to my personal page and share that post into a group. And I won't share it into the same group. I've got loads of groups and I'll share it into one group and a different group every night. And then that really puts the reach in. So you would see it on the big collaboration page. Wouldn't it? So every so often I've shared a, if I did that every day, it'd be like annoying yeah. at some point. I'm sure it would, you know. <laughs> um, so I actually strategically do it once every so often when I think it really hits home with that group. Yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't hit home with that group, then I won't do it. Um, that, you see your reach on your Facebook post then, absolute shoot for the thing because people engage with it and what it is you're, you're giving out content to people that want to engage with that. So that's the way, if you want to improve your reach, put the effort <coughs> in that time. Just pick maybe five groups that you really, that your ideal clients are based in, and then one each day feed into. Because then that way you won't be feeding each day that one group. They'll only see you once a week feeding into that. So you won't be over intrusive, and it'll always be great con give content that you're giving. Right, let's pile through some of these then. So, I can't read that, Tepper. Oh, right. So, um, Nikki's was, um, I don't know what it was. Time. Oh, time. Yeah. Sort of time. Sort time. Of time. Yeah. People come back and feedback on your post, then going back to them to feedback to them. Oh, okay. They've asked a question, or if they just wanting more information, or yeah. where to look for something. I'd say as soon, as soon as possible. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you the reason why, because if I put something on your, if I comment on something like yours, um, and I'm going to really contradict myself in two ways, right? So I'm going to say something I'm going to really contradict myself. So don't go, oh, you just contradict yourself. So I'm, <laughs> I'm good. So if I put something in yours, then what I'm saying is I'm kind of free at this moment. I'm in that moment. Yeah. So if I get a reply sort of kind of straight away. Yeah. Now, if I was selling products, that would, that, that would be a must. I would almost need someone to be doing that. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm interested about you, I've got a question about your product, I want to know then. Right. Otherwise, I'm gone somewhere else and bought it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that situation, yes. If it's more stuff where it's um, appreciation comments, as I call it, mm -hmm. saying, you know, like, like love heart, you know, so great pose, well done, yeah. then actually you can answer that whenever you want. So you do that in your time, you set your time to do that. But if it's a product, or it's someone that's asked a specific question about, like a, a buying question about your services, mm -hmm. then you really want to be answering that story because that's what they're saying, I'm free now, I'm answering. Well, you might be, sorry, you might reply in an hour later, yeah. and they're in a meeting and they're done now. Yeah. You know, um, or the worst case, even another net that might be in a network, and then someone else has gone. Oh, yeah, I can do that for you. I can put you in touch with someone. Yeah. Then they don't reply to your one. So yeah. if it's a buying signal, now. Right. <laughs> if it's not, then your own time. Mm -hmm. So for me, then for my clients, I manage their social networking yeah. content, and I will do their personal. So yeah. If they're getting messages, they really should be monitoring as well. So not just relying yeah. on me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where you see, so I mean, my company we offer uh, social media management now, but we specifically do it with human beings because it's the equivalent of if you was hiring us to do it, then it's equivalent you hiring someone to to do it as if they were in your business. Uh, and that's the point, yeah. When, unless it's as an industry where it doesn't matter, but where they've got to answer it, yeah. then either you've got to be really in tune with them, or you've got to have a, a separate client manager that really understands their business, but. They don't have to answer everything. They can refer them to and say, you know, like, great, I'll get your opinion to it. You know, if I bring up my IT people, I don't get the engineer come I'll get, you know, time goes, I'll get uh, Ian to give you a call later on. I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. So as long as you've had that engagement, you don't feel like you've been ignored, then that's fine. Sorry, Scott, I'm really aware of time. Yeah. It's so, so fast. Yeah. 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 I mean, I could sit here and listen to this all day long, Sorry, to be honest. Yeah. I've talked so all day long. I'm just trying so. to think what would be the best use of because there are some general, I think there's definitely some stuff around um, you 
kind of there's been a whole thing around how much like of your vulnerability so how much you share about your person how much you share about kind of business well, okay, there's, one, yeah. there's been quite a bit of question around what's the split or what would be a good right uh, so, or, or for people who don't yeah. like sharing well I'll give a good because I'm probably a good example of that actually where I probably I use Facebook a lot I probably would no I, I, I wouldn't if it wasn't for my business and I didn't I'm to about I was like no Facebook doesn't work for me um, I do release some personal stuff on my thing, um, but it's very strategical, if you like, and it's normally only when it's a positive message. I mean, what I hate most of all on Facebook is seeing other people's negativity. Um, so, and so I'll put some, I'll go in every so often, and if, if you're doing it every day as well, when it's a big long thing, and you're, it's almost like, oh my god, not this person again. Nice, you know, you almost want to slap them in the face, they sort it out, you know, but the but when someone does it every so often, I mean that's where it really hits thing. And you shouldn't be afraid of doing it, particularly if you want support, but with a sort of kind of if you like a, a positive message, you know, being trying to be positive on about actually just um if it's a point where you write it and you think like this is really negative and it's a real kind of a sort of a, a, like a, like a call for help or something like that, then actually well, I'd say you're much better off than probably ringing up someone you know close to you and asking them. Or putting it in our down to form. Yeah, or putting it somewhere like that where you feel you can get support. But if you remember, it's what you put on social media is open to the world, okay, and it's searchable, that dated. And at some point soon, the privacy thing's going to go out the window. We're going to be able to search people's posts quite happily back four or five years. Um, so, but if you put it out there, you put it out there, you know. Uh, so go and delete it now, actually, yeah. If you, there's already a thing on Facebook saying, oh, I'll see your memories from the last, and yeah. so and I think yeah. it's absolutely hilarious. Because yeah. I just, I've shared something from today, I was in a harvester or something, even the biggest chocolate pound ever. But um, I just think, so like you say, like, you look back and go, oh, cringe, and then you think, do I go back, delete all that stuff? Because yeah. obviously when you first started Facebook, that was when you use it as a personal, and now mine's like developed to more of a business. Yeah. It does work. And I say, we're by person, and I, well, there's my personal relationships are still personal. I do a lot of, I, use, I think Messenger's a great tool and I use that a lot. And there's a lot of conversations I have on Messenger. Um, there's talk of them actually coming out being searchable as well, which You're hopefully thinking. not. Oh, I, might, I might be going to delete some of them. Yeah. But, the, uh, but my very private conversations that, you know, and whether or not they're just between me and someone, you know, someone, especially when you're reading it, they might take it offensive or see the wrong, the wrong essence of what I meant. Um, so I'll keep them very private, you know. But I think for every so often, it's fine if you kind of want support, you kind of think, actually, then I can share that because you will get the support of people around you, which is great. But, um, but don't be afraid of that. And, and I suppose, you know, what I did on the Friday be collaboration, you know, it's so fun, really, sort of seeing people but putting a positive sort of thing on it. Mm -hmm. um, can actually if, if really... you don't want somebody to be upset by something, don't write it anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I think we're not. So old fashioned. Or, or in a room and share, and you're going to get instant feedback and, yeah. and positive feedback. But um, I think anything that you're worried about, should I, shouldn't I, then don't leave it. No. Yeah. It's what my mother used to say, you ain't got nothing nice to say, so don't say it at all. Which I used to say, <laughs> what I used to say was, uh, I want it coming from her. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it is right, but, but just that, what I would do, I don't want to tell kind of people not being showing their feelings on there, because sometimes that's really powerful as well. Mm. And particularly if it's connected to your business, you know. and. But you just sometimes don't, oh, yeah, I need some support, so. So with your personal, sorry, I just want to get this straight. So with your personal page, shut, uh, not shut it down, lock it down, so it's just purely for the people that you really want to have as friends. Yeah, and and, like unless that. it's, so also with your business, so how many of your business pages, sorry, just for, how many yeah. business pages are, is the name of your business? Okay, so one of the biggest things that, that turned my engagement around a little while ago is I changed the business name from Affecting People's Lives to Scott C. Campbell. Yeah. Okay, and the engagement has gone through the roof. But also, when I'm replying to things, it looks like a person replying rather than a company replying. And even if you're a one man band, some other people's perception of you, I mean, I did, you know, a couple of years ago, you said, I keep, you know, you know it's, it's okay now that I'm taking on people, but when I was a one man band, I was getting people saying, oh, Have you got any jobs in your organisation? Yes. You know? So I was obviously doing something perception wise that made them think I was a lot bigger than what I was, which is cool. But the, um, but on the other hand, you know, when people get in the reply then back from affecting people's lives, they don't know it's me. So my business name, my business page, you've got to change it to Tabitha, yeah. 
Um, don't do it as exactly the same because you won't know which account you're using. So I've, got, I've got Scott Campbell, Scott C. Campbell. Yeah, and it's very much a business profile picture, and then I can reply with that one. So it comes across, so it sort of looks like I'm being personal, also business. But then every so often, you know, I, I share a bit of personal things. Tend, if any, if you, any of you follow me, you tend to see a Sunday night, I'll, I'll put something about it, and uh, I'll happy to use them, my gorgeous little girl, to, to get a few more likes and, and connections and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that's the pictures of children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, well, that's out there anyway. It's going to be available, isn't it? The privacy yeah. thing, I think if you've got an issue around the privacy, you almost need to go because it's going to stop you doing anything, really. So. Yeah. Right, what I will say is um, obviously a massive thank you. But you're going to stick around, aren't you? Yeah. So, yeah, what I would say we'll wrap up because if people need to go, I don't want to stop you, then you can go. And other people who want to stay and talk to Scott, then, then you can do that too. Thank you. Um, thank you, Scott. Big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.